Okay, Eric, born April 28th. That means you're exactly 5,450 days, 17 hours, 15 minutes, and 37 seconds old. So, what have you been doing all this time? Waiting for Kiki. Where'd she go? <laughs> Must be nature calling. What the? Hey, it's a flasher. <laughs> gotcha. Ew, gross, my eyes are all red. I look 5,000 years old, not 5,000 days. What you see is what you get, old man. It's like a ghost becoming real. When's your birthday, Kiki? Can we just get to the story? Yeah, come on. Come on, guys, let's go. Okay, give me the pictures. Sometimes a camera sees more than the naked eye. Some Indian tribes hated to have their pictures taken because they thought the camera captured your soul. And maybe they were right. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story The Tale of the Captured Souls. The ad in the travel magazine said, it's the perfect hotel to spend a relaxing summer vacation on a crystal clear lake. Join us for a visit you'll never forget. But Danielle and her parents thought the place sounded too good to be true. But the ad was right. This was going to be a vacation they were never, ever going to forget. What a charming place. It looks boring. Should have gone to the ocean. Oh, what's the matter? You're getting too old to have fun with us all of a sudden? No. All right, then let's do it. All right. It's locked. Oh, well, check over the door. Maybe there's a key. Well, hello? Hi. You must be the Selmans. I'm Peter Curlin, the third. It's wonderful to have you here. Yeah, uh, thanks. Mrs. Selman? Very nice to meet you, Peter. Are your parents the innkeepers here? And this must be your lovely daughter, Danielle. Uh, yeah, Danny. Let me show you your rooms. I think you'll find them very cozy. This is beautiful. Thank you. Gross. Cool. You're in luck. We have no other guest this week. You have the place to yourselves. This is your room, Mr. and Mrs. Selman. I hope it's to your liking. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's with all the mirrors? My family's been collecting them for years. It's kind of a tradition. They sure do like to look at themselves. I kind of like them. Sorry about that. The wiring is quite old. In the mirror? Let me show you your room, Danielle. Don't call me Danielle. I hate that. What do you think? This is a closet, not a room. Danny, don't be rude. I think you'll be very happy here. Are your parents around? I guess we should be checking in. Uh -huh. Oh, they're not here. Actually, they're off on a cruise. I'll check you in. You're here all alone? Not anymore. A strange little guy. Totally weird.
Go for it. You've got quite an arm there, Danielle. Thanks. Don't call me Danielle. Come on, Pete, get in the game. I'm not much of a sportsman. Come on, pick up a glove. All right, here goes. Oops. Dad, I thought this was supposed to be our vacation gather. Forget this geek. Oh, uh, come on, sweetie. Give him a break. He's all alone. Besides, it'll be fun having somebody else to play ball with. Here you are. Well, maybe not. Okay. Smile, everybody. No! Pete! You okay? What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing at all. Let me take a picture of you all. Go stand with your family. What do you think of my room? You live here all summer? By yourself? Possibly longer. No parents? I do what I want, when I want. It's like a dream come true. Cool. What do you do for fun? What do you want to do? I always admire a girl with great physical strength. Is this you? No, wait. It says 1920. It's my grandfather. He looked a lot like me. What's this? It's an experiment. My grandfather designed it years ago. It's a transference of energy fields. But you're killing the roses. The geraniums are doing very well. It's natural selection with a little help. Don't! Ruin it! Okay, okay, sorry. What are you doing? Nothing, really. What? Don't be such a dweeb. Well, it's just, well, I think you're breaking out.
was he doing anyway, taking a light shower? Yeah, and why didn't he want his picture taken? Maybe he was afraid of what they'd see. But what about the cylinder? There are mirrors in there. Exactly, mirrors. Just like in the rest of the house. Strike three, you're out. Yeah, you lucked up with that curveball. You're out. I'm up. I'll pitch. Okay, slugger, try this one. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> nice hit, Pete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he got lucky. I gotta quit. I'm feeling a little woozy. It must be the heat. Well, we just started. I'm sorry, hon. But I really am beat. You go get the ball, okay? Wait. I'll get it. Don't worry about it. No! I said I'll get it. I'm too tired. Your father will take you. He can barely play softball. He's not going to want to swim. Go easy on him, Danny. It's his vacation, too. Great. You know, I, th I think we're going to have to get some medication for your skin. the old wire in. In a mirror. What happened here? Get this cleaned up before somebody gets hurt. I'm gonna take a nap. still be alive. What's that? What, what are you doing? There's something really weird going on here, Mom. You look terrible. No! Don't look in the mirror. Oh, I know I look terrible. I guess it is. It's just catching up with me. We gotta leave right now. Now, yeah, Danny, your imagination is running away with you. But you've gotten old in a couple of days. What are you doing? No, don't put it back. Yeah, Danny, don't be strange. Can't we just go home? Ooh, this country is getting me lightheaded. Then let's get out of here. I think I'll take a nap, too. Weak as a kitten. Peter! Peter, where are you? you Wanna talk? Peter! Very weird.
cameras. Who's that? Here really is wonderful. I just find it takes so much out of you sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me. Is that a new guest? Uh, what do you mean? <sighs> Some tea, Danielle. Four kids, ten dogs. So, you found our little plot. Who are you? What are you doing to us? You were right. It's all done with mirrors, which you have cleverly managed to avoid. After tonight, you'll be all alone, just like me. You can stay on in the house if you'd like. We can be friends. What do you mean I'll be all alone? Your parents are checking out tonight. What? Oh, yes. We've entered the final phase. It won't be long now. You leave my parents alone. Stay with me, Danielle. We can be young. Forever. You're crazy. No. I'm very, very smart. But if you won't join me, I'll have to use you, too. Ah! It's too late! You don't have any time! souls so you can stay young. How old are you? 80? 90? Don't be foolish, Danielle. I'm offering you eternal youth. You're a twisted old man. I'm a scientist. You're a monster. Please, Danielle, don't do anything. You don't understand. Oh, I understand, all right. I'm trying to take my parents away from me. Well, you messed with the wrong girl, Petey boy. Danielle, no! And don't call me Danielle. No! dropped a million years. You all right, honey? Where have you been? I stopped him. You stopped too. Peter, I was up in the... Never mind. Well, I feel great. What do we do? How about a trip? Hmm. Where to? Anywhere. That is a long way from here. And he... Peter? Goodbye, Danny. I'm going out back now to join my family. It's been far too long. Enjoy your youth while you can. Danny? Who was that? Nobody. 
I just found this out front. Any idea who it is? No. Just looks like some sad old man. Danny never told her parents a true story about Peter. Okay, let's go. They were safe, and Peter wasn't going to hurt anybody again. That's all that mattered. And she finally convinced her parents to go to the ocean. So you see, sometimes pictures do tell the truth, whether you like it or not. And I've got one shot left. Everybody. Why do we always tell scary stories at night? I mean, if they're scary, they should be just as scary during the day, right? No way. Things are always scarier at night. Yeah, but why? Because you can't see things at night. Yeah, like some ghoul could sneak up on you in the dark and you wouldn't know until it was too late. <laughs> yeah. So who's going tonight? I am. Man, what's the matter? You always tell the same kind of story. It's kind of gross, but everyone always lives happily ever after. Boring. So what's your problem? You're kind of gross and boring, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Things are scarier at night, especially in my story. You can be scared during the day, but don't bother, because the real terror never begins until night falls. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, except for Eric. I call this story The Tale of the Nightly Neighbors. TV all day and you're gonna turn into dad. Great. If that happens, I'll send you to your room. Forever. You're a zero. You'll always be a zero. You won't catch me sitting around like some toad. There's a ton going on in the world, Day Day, and I'm not gonna miss any of it. Hey, new neighbors moving in. At night? What's with the black clothes? I think they look cool. Maybe they're artists, or foreign diplomats. Or maybe they got dressed in the dark. I don't know, they look stupid. Whoever they are, they don't fit this boring neighborhood. Whoa! Tell me that wasn't creepy. 
I think I'm going to avoid our new neighbors. Need a hand? I need a new back. It's in the box. Whatever it is, they got two of them. You know these people? No, nah, they just moved in Friday night. We're coming over to say hi. What's their name? Um, Braun, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Look at this. Rav, no Ukraine. They're from the Ukraine. Is that near Disney World? No dip, it's near Russia. I knew that. Must have wanted these refrigerators pretty bad if they ordered them when they were still in Russia. That's what they are? Refrigerators? You're just gonna leave them? Yep, that's what the order says. Nobody home? Leave them in the driveway. See ya. Come on. That's weird. What? Their car's here. They gotta be home. Why didn't they enter the door? What if they're KGB agents who had to bolt when the Soviet Union crumbled? Or gypsies searching for a new home? Oh, get real. I'm late. Um, don't forget to tell your father about... Oh! I'm, I'm sorry. I'm late. Bye. Sorry, Mr. Mitchell. Mom's in a rush. She's a little crazy. Uh, it's okay. <sighs> I know the feeling. <laughs> you okay? Uh, yeah. I just got a touch of something. I'm as weak as a kitten. Well... Mail must go through. Uh, have you met the new neighbors yet? Oh, yeah. They stopped by my house the other night just to get acquainted. That's the night I'll never forget. Why? Were they strange or something? No. It's the night I started getting sick. I hope I can shake it off. Emma started paying close attention to the bronze. She watched them every chance she got. And the more she watched, the more she realized the new neighbors were just a little bit strange. They didn't talk to anyone, and no one ever saw them during the day, only at night. Even their kid Lex was never seen during the day. Hello. <gasps> Can I come in and play? Um, it's kind of late. Maybe some other time. Lex never started school. No one had even heard of him. And the strange disease that hit Mr. Mitchell was spreading through the neighborhood like crazy. Oh. People were losing their energy. It was like an epidemic going around, but no one knew what it was. And it started the same night the bronze moved in. Things seemed very strange indeed. Emma had a great imagination, but this was a little weird, even for her. Then one night, all the pieces of the puzzle came together. Me too, they have a crazy neighbor. You. Listen, why is it they're never out during the day? And where are they from? 
Here, Rovno, Ukraine. That's right in the middle of all those EL places. Romania, Bulgaria, Transylvania. And uh, what about those people? They're all getting sick, weak and pale, and they'll have band-aids on their necks. There's only one explanation. What? Our neighbors are vampires. Ugh, oh, I'm dreaming. No, you're not. They're vampires, all right. They gotta be. There's no such thing as vampires. Now go away! Remember those big crates that guy delivered? I think I know what was in them. Me too. Refrigerators. No, oh, I'll bet it was their coffins. And I'm gonna check tonight. I'm gonna wait till they leave, then get into their basement. I find refrigerators and I'm a jerk and you can bust on me all you want. But if I'm right and I find coffins, then our neighbors are vampires and we are in big time trouble. She's going into a vampire's basement at night? Adios, Emma. But they might not be vampires. <laughs> then why are all those people getting sick? Yeah, like blood was being sucked from their necks. I love it. What happened? Emma didn't know for sure if they were vampires, so she had to investigate. And that night, she did. Oh. What are you doing? Vampires don't like garlic. Neither do I. Maybe I'm a vampire. We're safe as long as you remember one thing. A vampire can't come into someone's home unless it's been invited. So never, ever invite the bronze inside. Got it? Yeah. I'll try and remember that. Good. You're not really going into the basement, are you? What if you get caught? I won't. Don't worry, look. They leave the same time every night. Probably in search of their next victim. Might we come in? Uh, sure. Come on in. No, wait. Um, uh, my dad's not home, and uh, maybe she'll come back another time. Bye. Uh, who's there, Daddy? Uh, nobody. Wrong house. Oh, hello. You're from next door. Well, come in. Come in. I'm sorry my husband isn't here. He works late. Ah, oh, we know what that's like, eh? We both work evenings. It's been hard on poor legs. He hasn't been well since we moved here. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What is it you do for work? We've been studying your emergency health care services. Paramedics, you call it. We ride with ambulances to study different techniques we can bring back to our country. 
It's absolutely fascinating work, although sometimes a bit um, bloody. <laughs> It's a refrigerator. Daddy's never gonna let me forget this. Why would they lock a refrigerator? If I can crack them at school, I can crack them here. You've been most gracious, Mrs. Toll, but we only came to introduce ourselves and we must get Lex home. Well, I'm so glad we finally met. Please, drop by any time. No, I mean, don't leave yet. You just got here. I'm afraid Lex needs to rest. But we can play video games. It'll be great, right, Lex? Maybe not. <laughs> It's getting late, Day Day. Don't worry, Day Day. Now that we've been invited, I promise you we'll be back. Blood, they're vampires, all right. And you invited them in. Did not. Mom did. Doesn't matter. I think they found their next victims. Who? Us? They were invited in, remember? We gotta tell somebody. Mom and Dad. Or the police. They'll never believe us. We're the only ones who know, and we're the only ones who can stop them. Yeah, how? Tomorrow after school. Before it's dark, we gotta get them before they get us. Here, put this on. What's in it? Wooden spikes. We have to find the coffins and drive the wooden spikes through their hearts. Uh-uh. This is too gross for me. Here. Wear this, just in case. Forget it. I'm not going. Day-Day, if we don't stop them today, they may come for us tonight. There. I 
think I'm gonna puke. Come on. Oh, it's locked. Don't worry, it's a cheap one. I can open it. Here, hold this. Hold it still. Oh, I'm scared, Em. Me too, but get a grip. That. I don't know, let's bolt. Be they the sister Emma. Hmm. I thought you worked at night. We did, but the schedule changed. Thank goodness. Hmm. <laughs> What's that? It's blood from the hospital. They have a surplus, and we've been storing the extra units here for them. They, they. Lex is still not feeling very well. We thought having a friend might help. Would it be all right if he came over to your house to play video games with you tonight? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, wonderful. Maybe we'll see you later, too, hmm? Nice to meet you, Emma. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> they work in a hospital. That's why they blood. And how was I supposed to know that? We better get them before they get us, Day Day. Ooh, I'm so scared. All right, I made a mistake. I'm never gonna let you forget this. Oh, give me a break. You're a loser. You're a big loser. They were in you, weren't they? I'm afraid so. No matter. Tonight's the night. <laughs> Wake up, Master. The sun is gone. You'll feel better soon, Master. You've been invited in by new victims. You are wise in coming to this country. There is so much more fresh blood here. And no one believes that a little boy can be a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> With ghosts and ghouls, there are no rules. 
but a vampire's bite only comes at night. The end. I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. Until next time. Pleasant dreams, everyone. Are you? It's okay, Frank. We're waiting for you. We were supposed to come together? Oh, yeah. Forgot. Sorry. For forgot? Great. You know, thanks a lot. Hey, be careful with that man. my father's. I gotta make you eat this. What's the big deal? Well, you see... All right. Just forget it. Poor Frankie lost his flashlight. Let it go, Eric. And, and what? And he's afraid of the dark. What? Not Mr. Tough Stuff. It's okay. I get scared in the dark sometimes, too. I'm not afraid of the dark. I just wasn't sure I could find the clearing without a flashlight. You're gonna pay for this, man! Well, don't kill him yet. He's telling the story tonight. Yeah, and it's a good one. There's a little boy in it who's afraid of the dark. Oh, you're dead meat. Oh, sit down, Frank. Don't be strange. No, I'll stand. Just tell the story. Well, everyone knows that there's nothing in the dark that can hurt you. Most of the time. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story... The Tale of the Dark Music. Andy Carr wasn't doing so hot. His folks got divorced and his mom wasn't making much money. He tried to help her as best he could, like with his paper route. It gave him money to buy lunch at school. Things were pretty tough. Then one day, it looked like his luck changed. His mom inherited a big old house from some uncle she could hardly remember. Just like that. Didn't cost her a dime. It was kind of old, but a lot better than the puny apartment they lived in. It really looked like the car's luck was changing. Except there are two kinds of luck, and you don't always get the kind you want. Hey! You mess with me, kid, and I'll deck you. What? Look, everybody was glad when your nutbag uncle kicked, then you had to show up. Hey, I never even met the guy! You're his family, it's the same thing. If you get in my face again, you're history. Who are you? I'm your new neighbor. Welcome to the neighborhood. Oh, I hate these things. They're so stupid. Mom? Yeah? What was Uncle Niles like? I don't remember. Last time I saw him, I was Christina's age. This is useless. Do me a favor, go down in the basement and see if he had a ladder. The basement? Yeah, there's a bunch of junk down there. <sighs> uh, I don't know. What's the matter, Andy? Afraid of the dark? No, I'm not afraid of the dark. <sighs> Be careful down there, it's a real mess.
Hey, somebody hit the wall switch up there? I need some power. Do it yourself. How's that? Good, thanks. I heard that. <sighs> Who's there? Hello, Andy. Come on in. Man in the basement. I love it. Uncle Nas may be dead, but he's not forgotten. Ooh. Mm, yeah. Mm. You okay, Frank? Frank? Where'd he go? I didn't see him leave. He couldn't take it. I told you it was chicken. Keep going. He'll come back. So anyway, Andy freaked and ran up to get his mom. Because his worst nightmares were coming true. It was in there. It talked to me. It said, come in and I'll suck your blood or something like that. Get lost. Get back upstairs. Now. Oh. It, it was probably a rat or something. Rats don't talk. Good. I hate rats. <laughs> Andy. Honey, come over here. It's the root cellar. <laughs> I swear, Mom, there was something in here. Well, maybe it was a rat. <laughs> or the leaky old plumbing. <laughs> this house is falling apart. What's this? Oh, I was playing with this old radio and... <laughs> well, there's your boogeyman. It must have been something on the radio. I don't know. Oh, honey, I know it's been tough. But I really need you to be strong for me right now, okay? Okay. Ugh, that's my guy. Let's get something to eat before Christina gets it all. You want an allowance? You earn it. Yeah, yeah. What's this? 
the matter? I thought you were afraid of me, Dad. What are you doing down here? Playing? Boy, you're such a wuss. Don't come down here alone anymore. Yeah, the boogeyman might get me. And now, the fireplace. Mom? Yeah? Who was Uncle Niles? Like, what did he do? Well, he was a strange guy. He never left the house, but somehow got filthy rich. Nobody knows where the money came from. <laughs> from what I hear, the neighbors didn't like him too much. I thought he was kind of loony. How did he die? He was old. Just stopped living. I found him in the basement at the bottom. <laughs> Let's change the subject. Chris, go down and put the clothes in the laundry for me, okay? Christina? Mom, I'm busy. <sighs> oh, Mom. I'm filthy. Please? Remember, there's nothing down there. What? Are you okay? Yeah, sure. Andy was like hypnotized. He didn't remember anything that happened, which means he didn't know enough to never go down in the basement again. Hi, honey. I'll be at the store till five. Do me a favor and throw these tarps in the wash. Don't 
stop now, son. You're almost king. What's the matter, Andy? Don't you want to have some fun? <laughs> oh, yeah! This is gonna be the show! Music. It's music. I got his home mom. Stay for a ride, isn't it? Stop! I gotta go find my mom! Your mom's not gonna help you now, kid. Get used to it, kid. I'm gonna beat on you for the rest of your life. Don't! Don't! <laughs> Now you've got to deliver your stupid papers by foot. And you'll never get away from me. Howdy, neighbor. When you're done, come over and clean my house. You make a good maid. You're dead. Kid, you are toast. What's the matter, Coda? You're not afraid of the dark, are you? I'm gonna kick your butt, Car, I swear! Well, I don't know. I think your butt kicking days are over. Coda? Had enough? You mess with me, I'll do this to you again.
yours, Andy. I'll give you anything you want. Just like I did for your uncle. Who are you? Anything you want. You only have to do one thing. What's that? Feed me, feed me. sister to the thing, did he? No, but he made sure that she didn't bother him anymore. Cool. <laughs> I'd have done it. Little brat deserved it. Great story, Eric. Well, it's getting late. We gotta go. I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. with my father's flashlight. I gotta take that thing home. So wait for him. He'll be back. Wait? Here alone? Why can't you wait with me, Kristen? What's the matter, Eric? Afraid of the dark? Uh, hey, no problem. I'll wait. I am not afraid of the dark. Not afraid of the dark. are sweet. I guess everybody knows that Frank was supposed to tell tonight's story, but we have an unusual situation and he's agreed to pass the bag to Eric. Eric? My grandfather died this week. He was from Ireland and he used to tell these neat stories from Era. He'd act out all the different parts, and he used a new voice for each character. Um, before he died, he gave me his hat. He said, Eric Malad, guard it well. It's blessed with the power of the pixies. What's a pixie? Well, they're what Papa used to call fairies. He said, lad, if they always acted fair, I'd call them fairies. Papa was our kind of guy. He'd only tell stories about the evil ones. And he had this great one about Kelpie, a kind of water horse that invited little kids to hop on its back so he could swim out into the ocean and eat them. But I think that Papa's favorite pixies were the leprechauns. That's where he said he got his hat. What is a leprechaun? 
Well, they're kind of like little old men, and they make shoes. And they dress all in green, and they wear strange little hats like this one. How'd your grandfather get the hat? Well, he said he got it in a trade. If a person offers a pixie a trade, they can't refuse no matter how bad a deal it is. All you have to do is say, mine be yours, and yours be mine. Anyway, this was one of Popov's favorite stories, so I'm gonna try to tell it the way he did. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story, The Tale of Jake and the Leprechaun. Screaming lad, or I'll eat out your liver. <laughs> now, why would a vile creature like you pick on a poor boy like this? Aye, Seamus Doyle, you stay out of this. I've come to take what's mine. <laughs> Stand aside, boy. The battle's just begun. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody help me with this wig. Cups. Well, let's break for the night, everyone. Good work. Jake Joyce wanted to be an actor more than anything else. His big break came when he landed the lead in Will of the Wisp, a magical play about leprechauns and goblins. It was Jake's first play, and unfortunately, it was going to be his last. Lucy! Lucy! I need my tea! I need me tea! Ah. <laughs> Just the thing. Just the thing. Hey, Lucy. Mm-hmm? What's that stuff Aaron's always drinking? Herbal tea. His own recipe. He says it helps him be creative. <laughs> it must work. He's brilliant. You think that stuff would help me? I'm not doing so hot. Oh, I think you're doing just fine, Jakey. Here's the recipe, but I doubt you'll find the ingredients. Aaron has his own stash, and I don't think he'll share. Jake! Oh, Jake! Thanks, Lucy. Good luck. Jake Miller. I feel inspired. Let's practice the jig. Sure. Look at this place. Over a hundred years old. Nearly as old as I am. Shut your eyes. Feel the magic of the stage. The power of the theater. Let it transport you into another realm. And make you into a magician. Take a good long drink, sugar, so you stay pretty and fresh. <laughs> Hello? Anybody here? Whoa. <laughs> You're looking at me like I was a saint, but heed me words. You're the one who has the glamour. I'm sorry. It's just that... What do you mean, I have the glamour? Nothing at all. Just a feeling. Sean O'Shane is the name. Remember it. You might be needing me. What is it I can do for you? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for, for some special herbs to make tea. Do you carry these? You've come to the right place. Me herb garden is one of the bluebells, foxgloves, and ragweed. How dare you bring this here? It's just... You'll not be getting such herbs here. A pox upon you for asking. It's just for tea. I know what it's for. Off with you, off. Hehehehe. <laughs> 
<laughs> Take his soul and grind it all, and eat it with the fish. The boy be mine for all of time. This is what I wish. <laughs> Make me a leprechaun. The goblin can come back any minute. Are you sure? Yes. Hurry. You'll never be a boy again. I don't care. Then dance with me. And speak as I speak. The fairy ring does dance and sing. The mortal bloom a die. The fairy rings dance and sing, the mortal gloom a dying thing. Now turn me into spirit bright and leave behind the human light. Turn me now into a spirit bright and leave behind the human plight? What? What's happening? Keep going on. Don't stop now. You run to something. No, stop. Stop it. All right, all right. That's enough. That's all, everybody. Good day, good day. Jake. Jake, my lad. You've got to let yourself go. What's happening to you now is the stuff of genius. Trust me. But my voice changed. I changed. It was scary. It was wonderful. I don't like it. Jake, you've got to understand. When you're making magic up here, it's like, it's like you've got the glamour. You have the gift, boy. Use it. Mr. Shaney, it's me. Ah. Go away, you're not welcome here. Please, I need to know about those herbs. Yeah, I am sure you do, but I can see through you like hard crystal. Leave me be. No! Please, listen to me. You're taking me for a fool, and Sean O'Shaney is anything but a fool. Good day. <laughs> well, something weird is happening to me. You saw it. It's like I'm changing. What is this place? I've let you in to say your piece. So get on with it. Okay. I'm in this play. It's about a leprechaun who saves me from a goblin by turning me into a leprechaun too. Go on. But it's like the more we rehearse, the stranger I feel. Last time my voice even changed. It was scary. Aaron said that... Aaron? He's a leprechaun. He told me it was because I had the glamour. That's what you called it, too. This sounds dumb. Maybe I'm just nervous about the play. You really don't know about these herbs, do you? Just that Aaron uses them to make tea. Oh, he does, does he? Herbs can be very powerful if used by those who know how. And if you know how to get them. How'd you get those? A trade with a springin. Yours be mine and mine be yours. It was all I took. Cost me my favorite toothpick. Yours be mine and mine be yours? Hmm. Sounds like a line from our play. When did you say this play of yours is? We open tomorrow night. Last rehearsal's tomorrow at noon. Why? You want to come? I wouldn't miss it for all the suds in Dublin. Then dance with me. And speak as I speak. <laughs> the fairy ring does dance and sing. The mortal bloom a dying thing. Saints and stars. 
The fairy rings dance and sit. The mortal bloom of dying. <sighs> Turn me now into spirit bright and leave behind the human plight. Turn me now into a spirit right and leave behind the human plight. Lucy! Lucy! Who's been mucking with these ropes? I want everybody, all the actors to the green room. I'll get to the bottom. Saving your life if you don't mind. What? I'm the one who released the rope. Are you crazy? You nearly killed me. Now, John Didrich is true, but it's not from me. Take a deep breath and look at yourself. His ears got pointy? Weird. Very weird. Yeah. And as Pop-Up used to say, this is where the plot thickens. I felt it the first time I saw you. It's the glamour. Every time you take the oath, you're a step closer to becoming a changeling. A changeling? But it's a play, it's not real. It's as real as those pointy ears. And tonight you'll take the oath for the final time. This can't be happening. Aaron wouldn't do this to me. Hmm. He would if he is who I think he is. Where does this Aaron dwell? His room's downstairs, but no one ever goes there. He always naps before performances. Ah, oh, what better time to pay him a visit? I don't think he likes visitors. Then let's be crafty about this. Lucky charms and far-leaf clovers. <laughs> what are you doing? Help me now, lad, and I'll answer all your questions later. as I suspected. That's my hat. That's my picture. Leave it be. You'll know we've been here. Aaron's got a pet toad. That's no toad, lad. It's a changeling. We haven't much time. Come on. Robert, uh, time. It must be here someplace. He's coming back. Foxglove. Uh, cowslip. Ah, got it. Rowan root. Now we're in business. Let's go. We're dead.
errands, a banshee. Aye, the cruelest of all the pixies. They drink the tea of bluebells, foxgloves, and ragweed. That's why I thought you were the one who wanted the herbs. Then what does you want with me? Ah, uh, here's where it gets sticky. They feed on human souls, the banshees do. Every seven years, they need to devour another one, leaving some poor creature in its place. The toad. The toad was a person. A changeling. That's the oath you've been taking during the play. For real. Lose this. I'll call him dad. they will get the police. Take it easy, Skipper. The process has already started. Look at your ears. You can't survive as half a change, Lynn. But what can I do? You can beat him at his own game. Bad for an opening act. I thought you forgot. Are you ready for the finale? As ready as I'll ever be. Nah, that's the spirit. Let's get to work. There are three rules to beating a banshee. You must do them all or the game is lost. You with me? Do I have a choice? No. Rule number one, be fearless. Swallow this. Forget it. We don't have time, Jake. Fearless. Oh, fearless. Oh. Good. Now, where's the boater bag? Now add these. Rowan tree, red thread, puts the witches to their speed. <sighs> Rule number two. Give him a taste of his own medicine. Don't you drink that yourself. <laughs> Don't worry. Rule number three. Don't take your eyes off him. You must spellbind him. Lock your eyes with his and turn his own spell against him. Understand? Then let the angels be with you, lad. The fairy ring does dance and sing, the mortal gloom a dying thing. The fairy ring does dance and sing, the mortal gloom a dying thing. Turn me now into spirit bright and leave behind the human plight. Turn me now into a spirit bright and leave behind the Cuban plight. Who have you been talking to, boy? I lost his gaze. <laughs> You're not afraid, are you? <laughs> no, no. I'm fearless. Do you guys see what I've seen? What is it? Did we miss this in rehearsal or something? What is this? You're all mine. Help! Help somebody! This is really happening! You're made forevermore! <laughs> Hello, Court. Or is it Aaron now? Sean O'Sheeny. Well, you're too late this time. Court, still up to your same old tricks. Because all tricks still work. Sean? <laughs> so you thought the little leprechaun would help you? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Seven years I've waited, and now you're mine! No! 
<laughs> You're mine. <laughs> right, your court. He is yours. And this is mine. Me too. <gasps> Indeed. But now it's mine. I've kept it all these years. Care to make a little trade? No. Yes. No. Yours be mine, and mine be yours! No! Absent friend, distant place, return, return to the human race! What happened? You free lad. You beat the banshee. It's not. Are you really a leprechaun? When the need arises. Wisp was never performed again, and Aaron had disappeared forever. The end. And that one, Pop Up, was for you. That trick. Yeah, well, you're one sick little puppy, you know that? So your dad really owns this place? Yeah, that's where I get all my story ideas. There's all sorts of strange and voodoo and occult stuff in here. <clears throat> About your story, Gary, I shouldn't be telling you this, but well, some of the guys have been saying that they haven't been too scary lately. Who said that? I don't know. What are these? Super specs. They give you x-ray vision. Whoa, yowza! Give me a break. What's the matter? You don't believe in magic? Oh, and you do. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Sometimes it's best to keep an open mind and be ready for surprises. Yeah, well, if you ask me, I think he's slipping big time. No way. Gary tells the best stories. Oh, good story. Story. Yeah. No, no, not yet. Frank's right. I can't remember the last time Gary really scared me. Jeez, you scared me. Sorry I'm late. Uh, David can't make it tonight. He's uh, sick. That's okay. Kiki was just saying how your stories haven't been too scary lately anyway. I'm gonna smack you. Not scary, huh? Well, why don't you give me a shot tonight? I'll see what I can do. And the boss. The story I've got is about three kinds of people. People who believe in magic. People who don't. And people who should. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. 
I call this story... The Tale of the Super Specs. Weeds was into magic and tricks in a big way. And since April Fool's Day was coming up, he had to get ready. The dust of Dendron. Powder monkey bones, you know, crucial every witch spell. I thought we were going to the movies. Later, later, I'm casting a spell. Oh, sorry. Let's see. Oh, here it is. The spell of the second sight. Umbu, Tubu, Sunrage, Vinsu, Ruru, Bambane! What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. It's just some kind of voodoo spell. Weeds, we've been seeing each other for what? Like a long time now, right? Yeah, two weeks. I'm beginning to think that you're not very mature. What makes you say that? <laughs> oh, this is good. We're so gross. Can we go now? Come, come. Playtime's over. Bye now or bye now. Okay, Mr. Sardo. I'll take uh, it's Sardo. No Mr. Accent on the dough. Uh, yeah. Look, um, I'll take these and the monkey bones too. April Fool's Day tomorrow, he's got to stock up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, have you seen our vomit? Hey, hey, what are these? Ah, you have a sharp eye. I've sold hundreds and thousands of those. What do they do? Some say they give you x-ray vision. Yowza. <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> Look, I'll take these two. I'll ring you up. Come on, try them on. They're good. I wouldn't wear those for my funeral. Come on, MB, lighten up. Put them on, they're cool. Cool. Well, have you seen anything? No, it's stupid. What was that? What was what? I think Mr. Sardo has got you a little wacko. Mm. Haven't pulled any April Fool stunts on us yet. Oh, that, that's stupid kid stuff. Yeah, but you're a stupid kid. What are you looking at? Meh, I knew it was gonna be a ripoff. What's with him? Who knows? He's always. My voice. What's wrong with my voice? Great, thanks. What are those? Don't you know? These are magic glasses that make you look cool. They'd have to be magic to make weeds look cool. Don't I look cool, or do I just look like a... What's the matter?
I saw somebody. A strange woman. Yeah, April, April Fools. Fools. Okay? You don't believe me. Oh, come on, MB. What do you take me for? Some kind of doofus? Don't even answer that. Look, I'm not lying. Every time I put these stupid specs on, I see. She's there. Look by the tree. This is getting really old, MB. You don't see her? Hey! Yes! H-O-R-S, sucker. Miss this, and you're done. Raja, um, Say what? Look, this is all net this time, okay, baby? This one is going in. Airball, horse, my game. I hate this game. That's two sodas, dude. You owe me two. So I came out of the school, put on the glasses, and she was there by the tree. So she just stood there staring at me, and then she, like, pointed at me. Who was it? I don't know. Maybe it was some kind of stupid trick Weeds is playing. The guy is strange. Nobody bought me for a one-week anniversary. What? Some stupid book on mummies or something. I got it right. What's the matter? I thought you threw him away. I did.
then she should have burned those specks or chucked them in the garbage disposal. But the apparitions weren't really there. Or were they? She didn't know. All Mary Beth knew was she could only see them through the specks. So what did she do? The only thing she could think of. She went looking for weeds. Maybe he knew what was going on. Weeds! Weeds! The specks! I swear I'm seeing things! They're ghosts! Whoa, 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 whoa! Slow down! Slow down! What's the matter? Whenever I put these specks on, I... S Vomit. Uh, try me Tuesday. No, it's the specs my boyfriend bought. Sorry, no guarantees. If they don't work, that's your never mind. No, wait, my problem is they do work. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, scourge? Um, pestilence? <laughs> Plague. No, here it is, here it is. The spell of second sight. That's it, that's the spell we did. It's gotta be what's making this happen. It is? Uh, uh, yes, it is, <laughs> of course. Am I like seeing ghosts or something? Ghosts? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, what you're seeing is, uh, another dimension. Uh, that's the second sight. Another dimension? Exactly. Uh, you see, there are, there are beings all around us, all the time, that we can't see because they're in another dimension. That's really creepy. Hmm. The, uh, the spell must have opened up a window, probably at your house, and those specks allow you to see into uh, a parallel universe. I've got a parallel universe in my house. Mm, apparently. And um, once the window is open, the beings can cross over into our dimension, and, uh, well, I don't mean to scare you, but they could take over. Very, very dangerous, very dangerous. So let's just go over to my house and close the window. <laughs> uh, yes, well, you see, the, the casting a spell is easy. One casting can be tricky. You need um, uh, an expert, someone who is familiar with the counter spells and how to cast them. Do you know the counter spells? <laughs> Naturally. But I have expenses. What will it cost? Fifty dollars? What? All right, twenty. But I'm losing on the deal. Okay, I guess. <laughs> good, 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 good. Now then, uh, let's see, let's see. Um, um, where's the... Uh-oh. What? Uh, the dust, the dust of Dengeron. I, uh, I'm out. I, I had some here. I must have sold the last pouch to... to your boyfriend. <laughs> That's the dinner on, you big rip-off? <sighs> Prepare for a burial at sea. Adios, monkey bones. Stop! You flush this dust and you're going in after it. I love Kazam. I love Kazam. Alakazam! Alakazam in a crystal ball? Come on, who does he think he's kidding? Can we, like, get this done before my parents come home? Shh! I need to concentrate. I thought you didn't believe in this stuff, Mary Beth. The window. The window into another dimension. We must close the window oh, to Sunrise Vinsu Rulu Bamba Nay. That's the same spell. Shh. Bamba Nay. Bamba Nay. 
We must close the window. Send them back. Send them back. Don't you need the dust? The what? Oh, right. Yes, yes, yes. The, the dust. Yes, yes. It doesn't work. Trust me. Bamba nay. Bamba nay. I am very, very embarrassed for this guy. Listen, what's that? Are you doing that? No. And B? Is this for real? What's going on? I don't know. I've never done this before. I thought you were the expert. Do something. The specs. Uh, uh, put on the specs and tell us what you see. No cause to be worried. I had everything under control. You know, magic is very much. Oh my. Maybe we didn't do it after all. What is it? Dada! Take the children! You have tampered with the cosmic seal. Two universes cannot exist on the same plane. Balance must be restored. Lux Marae! Lux the window. <laughs> Funny thing is, they were trying to get rid of you, too. Are they gone for good? I don't think they'll be bothering you anymore. <laughs> Universes were fighting for the same space. And the other universe won? Exactly. Because the woman in black was powerful and Sardo was a fake. That Sardo accent on the do. <laughs> Great story. And here's why I was late. Super specs! I got one for everybody as an April Fool's gift. Didn't cast any spells on them, did you? No, don't worry, they're safe. Now, when I count three, Everybody put them on. One, two, three. Well, guess your story was scary enough tonight. 
Guess so. April Fools. April, April Fools. Fools. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. It's a grave. It's probably somebody's dog. <laughs> yeah, right. There's only one reason why you bury things out here. Why? Because you want to hide the evidence. I bet my Michael Jordan rookie card we find a maggot-ridden corpse. Really? was the best. Run, run! I wasn't that scared. Yeah, right. It was cruel and immature. Hey, excuse me for adding a little fuel to the fire. Well, it wasn't funny. Speaking of fuel to the fire, who's going tonight? Me. Ah, another gore fest? My story is about a head of a different sort. An ancient wizard's good luck charm. Pick it up, and the world can be your oyster. But let the holder beware. This charm may be more than you bargained for. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story... The Tale of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. The story takes place today, but it began years ago. In fact, it truly began centuries ago. But I'm jumping ahead. Dean Burkham was the kind of guy who blended in. He didn't have many friends, he didn't do sports, and he never joined anything. He just kind of was. And he wasn't so great with schoolwork either. Mr. Burkham? You are sinking to perdition. One of Dean's only friends was Alex. Though she was his complete opposite, they really connected and had a great friendship. 
but it was a friendship about to be put to the ultimate test. Thanks, I'm useless today. You, huh? What's up? Another Crenshaw chemistry catastrophe. Ooh, ugly. I studied hard for this. I don't get it, Al. I can't catch a break. Hey, if you keep thinking that way, you're always gonna get dumped on. I know. I'm trying. Hey, I have a feeling your luck's gonna change soon. Great. Just as long as it doesn't get any worse. In World Cultures class, there was a special guest, a famous archaeologist named Dr. Oliver. Archaeology. The study of historic or prehistoric peoples by analysis of their artifacts, inscriptions, and monuments. The work is often painstaking, but the results can take you on adventures that will stagger your imagination. For instance, the high priests of Babylon used this golden dagger to cut out the hearts of slaves for their sacrifices. This bowl was used for salt. Not as a spice, mind you, but as a weapon. Some ancient cultures believed that salt was the best way to ward off evil. Sort of like garlic is to vampires. And this little prize was recently excavated from an ancient Babylonian sorcerer's temple. That thing belonged to a sorcerer? Inscriptions say that this scepter belonged to Goth, a particularly nasty magician who enslaved thousands to do his evil bidding. The writings say that following Goth will bring you incredible fortune and good luck. Crossing him will lead to your destruction. Of course, we don't believe in such silly things today, do we? Goth will bring you incredible fortune or lead you to your destruction. Oh, who's she kidding? I thought it was kind of cool. Give me a break. She's trying to make her job sound more exciting than it really is. Maybe. I'm going to the library. Want to come? Uh, I got some stuff to do. OK, see you later. Did I? Yeah. It's become a passion for me, unlocking the secrets of ancient civilizations. It's pretty cool. Indeed. Take your time. Don't be afraid to touch. Maybe I found another convert. That's what I'm here for. You may begin.
Yes, Mr. Burkham. Here's my test, Miss Crenshaw. Is this supposed to be funny? Is there a problem, Miss Crenshaw? Uh, no. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Burkham. that I'm not the loser they think I am. Dean! But something was wrong with Dean, and Alex knew it. He wouldn't talk to her and started hanging with a whole new group of kids. And one day, things took a very strange turn. Dean? Vapors. The return of Goth is at hand. Go! Centuries for an apprentice such as you, young one. The acolytes have been gathered. We are ready. Excellent. There is one final task to be performed before I am freed from this infernal dimension of darkness. I await your command. Before the moon rises tonight, you must gather the nightshade and prepare the cauldron. The mystic vapors must be released. The cauldron will be prepared. Do this, my young apprentice, and all that you desire shall be yours, and the power of the universe will be mine. <laughs> Yesterday, on to a new school and new minds to reach. Can I help you with something? <sighs> something really strange is going on here. It's that scepter thing she brought. It's got Dean hypnotized or something. Relax, child. There is no reason to be alarmed. Join us. 
and join God. <laughs> Hello, Alex. Don't be scared. It's only me. I am scared. What's going on? Dean, what are you doing? You called it. My luck finally changed. I'm not getting dumped on anymore. I'm in charge, and I like it. You're not in charge. It's this goth. Goth has given me the power. And I'm using it to bring him back. Dean, he's a monster. Look at what I've done. People follow me now. They take my orders. Half the school is with me, even the teachers. Dean, look at me. He's controlling you. You've got to come back and, and fight this guy. You're my best friend, Alex. I am. Come back. That's why I'm gonna let you go. But don't get in my way. It doesn't matter anyway. He'll be one of us soon enough. Mercuric acid? Sorry, Dean, it's police time. Hurry, the moon will rise soon. Let me go! She followed us. And she's ticked, now back off! Are you crazy? I gave you one chance to escape, Alex. I won't give you another. Put her in the van. Dean, wake up! Excellent. They're gonna boil her in that stuff. What is it? Whatchamacallit acid? Mercuric acid. I hate chemistry. Now, the acid has to do with those mystic vapors, right? Maybe. So what happened next? Looks like Alex's goose is cooked. Alex may have been backed into a corner, but she's resourceful. Where are we going? There's a place in the school not many people know about. It's been closed off for more than 25 years. They say the girl went mad in there. <laughs> she broke into the school one night. The guards chased her all over. When they found her, she was down here. Totally out of her mind. The room's been sealed off ever since. Until tonight, that is. Got the key from the security guard. He is one of us now. It's the perfect place to make our cauldron of mystic vapors. Help 
been so curious, Alex. I thought you'd want to stay for the main event. Stop it, Dean! Stop it now! Open the barrels! Pour the acid. Control of me. I know. But how did you know the chlorine would stop him? He was on Crenshaw's chemistry exam. Chlorine kills bacteria and, and the leaves were organic, so I, I figured it would zap him. I guess I was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you are. Welcome back. I'm afraid we failed. But I planted jewels in high schools all over the country. We'll have another chance. And to think, when I was a young girl, they thought I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> I smell a sequel. Yeah. World's doomed. Well, on that cheerful note, 
I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. I've almost got the key. I just, I just need a few more points, and, and I'll finally get it. Hey, hey, what's this button do? It resets the game. Oops, sorry. Excellent. You get the key yet? No. I may never get it. Piece of cake. I'll show you. <laughs> I don't see how you guys can get so into these dumb games. I mean, they are just games. Just games? They're like the battle between good and evil. You've got to be smart and fast and always think three steps ahead. And most of all, you've got to have a lot of patience. Hurry up, it's my turn. <laughs> but I mean, it's not even like it matters if you win or lose. All I wanted to do was get the key. Once. Oh, enough! Who's going tonight? I am. Let's fight over this later. Kristen's right. When you play a game like this, it really doesn't matter whether you win or lose. Because all you have to do is press reset. And you get a new game. And another chance. But what if it really did count? Imagine if you had to beat the game. Or the game is going to beat you. And there were no resets. No replays. And no second chances. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. I call this story The Tale of a Pinball Wizard. Ross Campbell was the kind of kid who was on his own a lot, so he knew how to take care of himself. If there was something he wanted, he'd do everything he could to get it. Ross did just fine for himself, but on this particular afternoon, he was about to go a little too far to get what he wanted. And unfortunately, he was going to get it. Give it to me! It's mine! No way! Yeah, but I saw it first! Yeah! Hey! What's going on down there? Ah, uh, here, you need it more than I do. You stay right there! Thought about it? Thought about what? The job. I want the job. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to hire any more kids. Come on, Mr. Olson. I'd work cheap. Besides, you could use a talented guy like me around here. To do what? Play pinball all day? It's the only talent you've shown me. Hey, Mr. Olson, that's cool. I got plenty of talent. And you can trust me. You'd never have to fire me like you did Steven. Hey, new pinball game. Hands off! Forget it! Why? 
because it's a collector's item. It doesn't even work right. It's missing a critical piece. Now, go play the games outside. All I wanted to do... Out! But... Out! Closing up. Why? It's only three o'clock. I haven't had lunch yet. Come back in an hour. Wait, this is perfect. Eating lunch at three o'clock ain't exactly perfect. No, let me watch the store for you while you're out. Forget it. Give me a chance. What if a new customer comes by? If I'm here, you won't miss out on the business. You can trust me. All right, come on, sit down. Don't move, don't touch the cash register, and don't touch any of the merchandise, especially that new game in the back. Can I go to the bathroom? No, I'm giving you a chance here, Ross. If I can trust you, I might give you a job. If not, you'll be out of here like Steven. Got it? Got it. Yeah, we'll see. in here uh no can i help you i left my music box here it's supposed to be ready today it is oh yeah sure it is uh must be around here somewhere what's it look like do you really work here yeah I'm in charge. Sophie, I'm Ross. My music box? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. What's it look like again? It's a throne in a gold box. A throne. Got it. It must be here somewhere. There it is. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Mr. Olson's always misplacing things. I can never find it. It's ready. Well, I'm sorry. I don't really work here. I'm just watching the place for Mr. Olson. He'll be back in an hour. Ah, oh, well, I've got some stuff to do, so I'll come back. Thanks, Ross. No problem. Got the crown, got the throne. 
Where's the princess? Oh, they have it. Finished. <laughs> Mr. Olsen? Kill me. This isn't a locker key.
Sophie! Sophie! Box. Where is it? It's out front. Who are all these people? There's no time. I need you to get me through this. Get through what? This is like a dream. Now we have to get the tiara. Look, I'm not going to... Ah! 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 the witch. Quick, open the box. They must have the throne. What are you trashing for? We have to hide it. If anything happens to us, we can't let them have both. Both? The throne and the tiara. We still haven't got the tiara. Listen, I'm not going anywhere until you tell me what's going on. Look out! Ah! Game? We have to find the tiara so that I can be crowned. There! Quick, before they get here! Perfect! Ah, I'm dodging! What do I do? The marbles! Use the marbles! Right. Stand back, boy! The game is over! Let her go! The tear! Get the tear to the third level! He can't hurt me dead! Now what? Sophie on the throne, I win, and it's over. This can't be the throne. It's too small. Whoa. That's more like it.
going down. Why she said I needed this. I'm gonna win this game. <laughs> Freeze! Don't be a fool, boy! You've lost! Look, I don't know what's going on here, and I don't know what you are, but if this is some kind of game, you're playing with the wrong guy. Because I never lose. <laughs> It's over, Sophie. I beat him. Look out! <laughs> the game isn't over unless all the characters die. <laughs> and I'm still here. <laughs> you shouldn't play the game, boy, unless you know the rules. But this isn't a game. <laughs> it's real. And when it's real, you can make up your own rules. No! You are out of here. No! Ah! There's one thing left. Would you do the honors? <laughs> you told me I could trust you, Ross. But you had to play the game, didn't you? <laughs> Hope you enjoy your free games. You'll be playing them forever. <laughs> When Ross saw that ball, he knew that he would never get out. The end. Here you go, Dave. Still want to give it a go? I don't know. I think I've outgrown this. It's all yours, Frank. <sighs> it's okay, uh, you got a Kiki. No, you got it. Um, how about you got it, Gary? Whoever's got the game. Just make sure the game doesn't get you. Night, guys. Bye. Till next time. <laughs>